The Hyperloop is one step closer to reality, Amazon's building a YouTube competitor, and the first of the Android Marshmallow budget devices are on the way. That's what I like. Hello and welcome back to another one of these weird, wild, and fun things that I do every week where I talk about all the things that I've found in the news that I like. And to start things off, as I mentioned in the intro, the company behind Hyperloop, Hyperloop Transportation, says that they've actually cracked the 760 mile per hour barrier traveling using a passive levitation system. If you're not familiar with Hyperloop, it was a concept put together by Elon Musk and basically he said, I ain't got time to deal with this, somebody else do it. Companies have started picking up on it, and now in California, they're in the works of actually building one. They say they're gonna be using aluminum for the tracks, they're not gonna have any sort of power stations, the cars are actually gonna be all powered, and if there's a power outage, because they're using passive levitation, the cars are not just gonna drop, which I would hope not at 700 and something miles an hour, and using things like aluminum is gonna keep the costs low, so this is looking good all around, and realistically what they're saying is, if they get this all said and done, they're gonna be able to go from Los Angeles to San Francisco in 30 minutes which is not possible currently. I don't even think you can do that on a plane. One way or the other, Hyperloop is something I'm really, really interested in, especially as a person who lives in more of a suburban, not connected to all of the big major cities type area. If there is a possibility there could ever be any kind of infrastructure like that that goes around the whole US, I would love to check that out, simply because to get from here to Chicago is like a five and a half hour drive. If I could get there in the span of, let's say, less than an hour, I would be extremely pleased with that. Same thing for New York. If I could get to New York and then have it take a couple of hours instead of taking like nine hours driving or three or four hours of flying? Yes, let's do that. Speaking of these new forms of transportation and whatnot, Google is expanding their self-driving car program into Arizona. This is the fourth city they've started experimenting in and they're looking for people to actually test out the vehicles. They're paying 20 bucks an hour for people to sit in these self-driving cars and be driven around while just touch typing on their computers reporting what's going on. They say you do have to be able to type pretty fast, but from the site, it doesn't appear to be all that fast, realistically. So if you're in Arizona and you're interested in learning more about this, of course, check out the link down below. Now, the funny thing is, the way that I'm connecting these stories, there's a real sort of a back and forth going on between some of these big companies. One, YouTube is working on adding native sharing, threads, commenting, messaging, kind of akin to what Facebook does, into the YouTube platform. Because right now, really, all you can do is you can comment on videos and reply to those comments or send direct messages to people. This is talking more about having friends on the platform and being able to share things with friends and groups of friends and having conversations. I don't know if it's 100% necessary. The grand majority of those kind of conversations I would have one-to-one -one with somebody I would do in Google Hangouts or on Facebook or on Twitter or somewhere else. I guess that's just one less thing to have to leave YouTube for. So in a way, like I said, it kind of feels like YouTube is going after Facebook with that. And then you've got Amazon who's creating their own video direct platform to compete with YouTube. So if you're a content creator here on YouTube, like me, you can now take your content and put it on Amazon as well and get paid for the ads that get played alongside of it, as well as anything that gets sold as a result of it. Might actually have to consider that, though I don't know how well that would do. And then moving on in that direction, Walmart is creating their own service to compete with Amazon Prime. They're calling it Shipping Pass and they're offering free unlimited two-day shipping if you pay $49 per year. So yeah, that sort of rounds out that whole little three-story bubble. I thought it was kind of interesting to see these companies stepping outside of their normal box and doing things that the other companies are already doing. One way or the other, it sounds like it might be better for the consumer at the end of the day, and I'm okay with that. Moving back into my own wheelhouse, Xiaomi is apparently rolling out their very own drone, their first drone starting later this month, with a price tag of just $100. Now the problem with this is when they use the word drone, I've got a feeling they don't mean drone as in like DJI Phantom 3 or 4 or unique something, any of these thousand dollar drones? No. I have a feeling they're talking more like the toy quadcopters, the things that I would normally do on a fly day Friday type video, these sorts of things, the little tiny ones that normally cost in the range of 50 to 75 dollars. They say it has a built-in camera, but again, something like this has a built-in camera. I think this thing costs like 50 or 75 dollars. And they say they're working with a third-party manufacturer to make it happen. That's completely expected. That's the way the grand majority of the stuff works over there. But to get it in under hundred dollars, there's a very good likelihood that it's going to be a toy. Still more competition in the market, more things to make videos about, in my opinion. Google made an announcement earlier this week. They rolled out a new piece of software called Gboard, which, for the moment, is exclusive to iOS devices. I've actually got it installed on the iPhone SE here, and I haven't tested out all the features on it yet, but it adds in GIFs, or GIFs, again, I don't care how you say it, the ability to search from the keyboard and take their search results and actually put them into your conversation. You can do emojis and stuff like that. The one thing I found that it's currently missing, at least on iOS, because it's only iOS for the moment, is it does not have a speech to text button, meaning if I'm using it and I'm in Hangouts or something, I can't tap a button and talk to my phone. I have to actually switch back over to the iOS keyboard for that. I was reading in the comment section about it somewhere, and it apparently has 
has to do with the way that Apple has the platform locked down. Cannot say that I'm surprised there in the slightest, but that's definitely a bit of a bummer in my opinion. Makes me not want to use it. If I were just typing and swipe typing all the time, that'd be great. But the grand majority of time, if I'm typing on here, I'm using speech to text because it's so much easier. Maybe a future release, maybe they'll figure out a way around it. Maybe Apple will let them in, probably not. I saw a post over on The Verge this week talking about the Amazon Echo and how there is now a product from Mission Cables called the Battery Base that plugs into the base of the Amazon Echo, the original Echo, and gives it a battery. It allows you to play music on it for six hours. It looks like it's about 50 bucks over on Amazon plus $3 shipping. So you're paying 53 bucks for something to take this very large speaker and make it portable when it's $129 for the Amazon Tap, which was meant to be portable. I'm not sure how much of a market there's gonna be for something like that, but still, I'm sure there will be somebody that will want it. Personally, if I wanted Amazon Echo on the go, I would either do the Tap or I would just not, I would use something like Google Now or Siri or whatever else. LG has rolled out a new device, the Phoenix 2. It's gonna be showing up at AT&T exclusively, if I remember correctly. It is available online right now for 100 bucks, and this is one of the first budget phones you can get with Android 6.0 on it. I did look around online a little bit and and apparently you can also get the Samsung Galaxy Express 3, I think that's the name, and it's like 80 bucks. So there may be a couple of videos in the near future about a couple of these budget phones that run Android Marshmallow, because they are starting to make their appearance now. LG also unveiled a new action camera, the LG Action Cam with built-in LTE. So it's basically like a little GoPro. It's actually kind of shaped like my little GoPro Hero 4 Session, but longer has built-in LTE and it can do live streaming. It's got a 12.3 megapixel camera, two gigs of RAM, four gigs of built-in storage. There will be a micro SD card slot. The four gigs of storage are actually just for the OS, but it also does 4K video at 30 frames a second, 1080p at 60 frames a second, so on and so forth with 720p. We'll don't even worry about that. That's slow motion stuff. I guess the biggest thing there is just making sure that they have the mounts available for them, that there's actually like a tripod mount or something on it. I don't see anything mentioned about it. And the mounts it's actually showing in the photos I see here, it looks like there's a little housing that grips it that's kind of weird, but it looks like that's sitting on top of a GoPro ball mount, so maybe they'll be intercompatible somehow. Either way, it's supposed to launch sometime next month, and of course, no pricing information is available yet. Sticking with cameras, but moving on in the direction of VR, the Views camera is now available for pre-order. This brings VR, but also 3D VR, and it's less than a thousand bucks. It's actually less than 800 bucks. Now, this is going to be a little bit larger than the grand majority of these newer 360 cameras we're seeing, but that's for a reason, because it's not just a 360 bubble camera, it's a 3D 360 VR camera. And again, it's 800 bucks. And if you don't want to use it for 3D, because there's not a whole lot of 3D at this point, you can use it in an even higher resolution. You can get up to 4K 360 video without all that spherical bubbling you see on a lot of the 360 cameras that are currently available. So $7.99 to pre-order it, you get a very, very nice picture quality with a couple of things. I think it comes with a tripod and a VR headset. Doesn't sound like a terrible option if you're a filmmaker. And I think they actually even mentioned software. There's like a view studio you can get along with it to do all of your editing. That's the one thing I'm kind of curious about with 360 video is how do you edit that 360 video to publish it? There's also a new Kickstarter project that got featured over on The Verge for the Eyes camera. Haven't watched the Kickstarter video, don't know how it's pronounced, but it kind of looks like a little praying mantis. Actually, I just happened to see it's in the article. It says very praying mantis chic, but it looks like two big bug eyes sticking out of this camera that gives you kind of a stereoscopic first person view. So it's not exactly VR, but it is kind of VR. It's not VR in that you can just look around and see what you want when you want to. It's more where you're really immersed into whatever scene it is that you're encountering. And it looks like that camera is going to be available for $399 shipping in October, but there's a special, it's $299 for the early bird. So if you're interested, interested in that sort of thing, the first person view, head on over to their Kickstarter campaign for more details. There's been some info coming out about Google I.O. that's coming up later this month. People keep finding out things about Android VR, that there's actually going to be VR stuff baked into the OS. And Pete Rojas from Gizmodo and Gadget and a bunch of other sites apparently has gone on Twitter and been talking about this, saying that it's going to be better than Gear VR, which is saying a lot because Gear VR is actually pretty decent. And this is actually news to me. In addition to being Android VR built into Android, it says Android VR is going to be a standalone headset. Again, better than Gear VR standalone headset, but less powerful than the Vive or the Rift, so it's not going to be like a full you can play all your games on it kind of thing. But again, as I've said many times before, having more options, more competition, more things in the market, it's a good thing. And just to wrap things up, one last VR story. If you're big into the Hitman series and you've played Hitman Go on mobile, apparently it's available for Gear VR and Oculus Rift right now. Have not downloaded it myself. It looks like it's in the $8 to $10 range on both of those platforms. Might be kind of cool to be able to sort of immerse yourself into it. So again, if you've got one of those platforms, and you're interested in playing it, links to that as well as everything else that I talked about down below. But that's going to be all for me for today. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for supporting the series. Remember to leave a thumbs up down below if you like this video and subscribe to receive more, and we will see you again next time.